Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. This is episode 66. Have you ever had this thought that if you could just get in front of someone that you know you would do really well in the interview and you could get the job? I had that thought all the time. I was always super confident in my interview skills. And I knew if I could just get in front of a person, they would just meet me and I'd have a chance to talk with them that that I would get the offer. You know, and that actually proved to be true. I did the math once and I, I wanna say it was like 80% of all of the job interviews and promotions that I put my name in the hat for resulted in me landing the gig. So I know that there are some of you out there as well who know that you could do it, but you are just not getting in front of enough people. And if you aren't getting enough opportunities to interview, it can only be two things that are going sideways. Number one is your resume isn't working hard enough for you. Number two, your job search strategy is off. Now, this is part one. So today I'm going to talk about your resume. I'm going to talk about how you can get a resume that is working harder that is opening those doors because that's what this is about right it's about opening the doors to giving you the opportunity to talk to meet someone to help them see your value so let's talk about the resume this week and then next week we'll talk about your job search strategy because trust me i've got some thoughts about that as well as you can imagine So when we're talking about a resume that opens doors for you, it needs to do three things. It needs to showcase your value. So this is that accumulation of all the good stuff that that you've attached to yourself through your career, everything you've learned, the people you've interacted with, stuff you've observed. It also needs to show your capacity for contribution. This is partly your accomplishments, but it's also done in a way that showcases your potential for recreating those accomplishments in the future. And lastly, it's got to be aligned with the roles that you are seeking because a resume is not everything you want to say about yourself. It is a valuable marketing document that connects you with the role and making the hiring manager's life easier and better. That is the objective, my friends. So if you're trying to put more into that than those things, then chances are it's too much. The other thing could be that it's not enough information, but we'll we'll address that as well because just listing out the bullet points of job description-y things that you did is not showcasing your value. It's not showcasing your capacity to contribute at higher and higher levels. So we wanna make sure we tackle all of this. So what I wanna do is I want to take you through a resume from top to bottom. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I want you to go back and listen to this podcast and have your resume in front of you and check it. Make sure your resume is hitting all of these components 
And if it's not, then you have some work to do, okay? But let's start at the top. At the top, of course, you're going to have your name. You're going to have your contact information and you're going to include your LinkedIn profile URL because today's best practices include the combination of a compelling resume and a compelling LinkedIn profile. Think about it like this. Your LinkedIn profile is your professional website and your resume is a brochure. You can actually say a lot of that other stuff, that additional content that you want to have on your resume, you can actually put that on your LinkedIn profile. You have a lot more space, a lot more character count to include more of that value add on LinkedIn. That's why your resume and your LinkedIn profile work so well together. Now, I will have a download for you in your show notes of a visual guide to help you create a very compelling and optimized LinkedIn profile. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that in today's podcast. I do wanna go through the resume in depth. So you have your name, you have your contact information, including your LinkedIn profile URL, and you follow that with a headline. Now the headline is a couple of things together. Number one, it's the job title that you are seeking. It is, in addition to that, a couple of key functions or keywords or the industry that you are pursuing. So in the example that I have in front of me, as I walk through this, is if the job title is senior payroll specialist, a key component of that role might be business process transformation, right? Maybe that's a key component. Maybe that's something you've seen in the job description and it's something that you know you can do. The other thing is project management. If you see that in the job description or you know that is an aspect, a key value add, that you bring to the role, then include project management in your headline. I like headlines that are three parts, job title, keyword, and industry, or a job title and two job functions, two aspects of the role, two attributes of the role in that headline. Just make sure that one of those is the exact job title you are applying for because that can be traded in and out really easily as you are putting your resume out there and getting it in front of people, okay? We want it to be more like you raising your hand saying, hey, this is the job I'm applying for instead of using your headline like, hey, these are the things I've done in the past. I know you get where I'm going there. Next having a professional summary that describes a bit about your experience that leverages some of your key behavioral strengths and describes how you create results or how you impact the organization that's what i want you to have in your professional summary it doesn't have to be a long one it can be just several sentences Have it be four or five lines altogether, but have it be something that creates a very clear picture of exactly what you bring to the table. And I like that last sentence to be the the outcomes, the impact that you create inside of an organization. In a resume that I wrote for a client, the last sentence that we used in this professional summary was, an interdirected, energetic leader capable of building effective teams and providing excellent service while positively impacting business results. Right, that's that final statement, so good. Now, next is kind of an optional area. 
It is something that you can include if you want to. I think if you're in a role that has a lot of requirements in terms of core competencies or business proficiencies, it makes a lot of sense to have a section called business proficiencies or core competencies and list those things. So if you've got a lot of technical things, platforms that you work on, uh, methodologies like Six Sigma or Agile or Scrum, use this proficiency section as a combination of those hard skills and requirements, the things you know how to do that you can address right there. They are keywords, so it's very helpful for a person skimming this to see, oh good, you can do project management. Oh great, you have payroll administration skills. That's how you want this business proficiency section to look. Now, I would suggest that you do three, no more than four lines for business proficiencies. If you have a lot more than that, if it goes into five or six lines, then break it up to say business proficiencies and technical competencies, say. So separate the real techie stuff from the stuff that are more transferable skills, okay? Next. And this is the section that is an absolute game changer on a resume. And that is a section that I call your essential skills and achievements. This is where you create some brief narratives that talk about how you show up, who you are, and it attaches who you are to a key accomplishment. We want the accomplishment to read like a natural byproduct of who you are, of these great characteristics and attributes and behaviors that you bring to the table. So when you pick up on some essential skills, you're going to be including things like leadership and management, communication, problem solving, adaptable and flexible. Look at the things that you know are the transferable skills, essential skills, as I like to call it, that underpin success. The success you've created in your previous roles and the success you will create in your future roles. Build those out with descriptions. In my work with clients, we use a very specific workplace behavioral strength survey that gives a really amazing comprehensive description of who you are and how you show up. There's lots of freebies out there that can help you understand your natural behavioral strengths. And when you do those, be sure to pick up on some of those key components and use those as your descriptions in your essential skills area. So I'll give you an example of one that I wrote for a client and we were calling out the versatile problem solving essential skill. Here's an example solves difficult or complex problems with a combination of detailed analysis and the ability to identify patterns through observations, experiences, and reading situations. Always seeks creative ways of providing innovative solutions and accomplishing goals. Provides strategic recommendations designed to further organizational efficiency. And the accomplishment that we attached to that was spearheaded new business practices resulting in a 45 minute time savings and 15% overhead cost reductions. Do you see how that accomplishment is a direct result of being a versatile problem solver? This is the kind of thing I want you to look for in yourself when you are crafting your resume. Now, I like to have a minimum of three essential skills and achievements, especially if you're early in your career and you're really trying to keep your resume to one page, three essential skills with achievements is plenty. You can use three to four lines 
for each of those essential skills to provide that description, but you want to have it because this is the thing that kind of stops them dead in their tracks. And this is the thing that gets them thinking about you and who you are and what you will look like on their team instead of just associating what you bring to the table with your past. This essential skills area is incredibly effective when you are making a career pivot because then your previous work history is, which is likely going to be on page two anyway, is not going to be a distraction because they've already read all this amazing stuff about you before they ever get to page two. All right. Now, speaking of the professional experience section, there's a couple of different ways you can approach this section of professional experience. And a lot of it depends on how much professional experience you have, how much you want to say about that experience, but it all goes back to making sure that it aligns with the role that you're seeking. So include the company, include your job title, include your dates. Now, if your job title included a lot of inside language, like say that your company just had a job title that was something they thought was fun, (laughs) and it doesn't have any relationship to job titles that you're seeking out there, it's perfectly acceptable to include a combination of job titles in here so that you can show up as relevant for the role that you're seeking. If you want to describe something a little bit further in like a a brief statement as an intro before your bullet points where you can mention what that company called that role, that's totally fine. But mostly you just want to help the other person connect the dots here. You want to help them understand that this role is what you were doing. It was just called something different. All right, so that's totally fine. Underneath that little intro, include three to five bullet points. Your more recent roles will probably have more bullet points than your previous roles. And always start the bullet points with a great verb. Responsible for or managed are way overused and it's really not giving someone the picture of who you are and the kind of value that you delivered in those roles. So use words like processes, performs, handles, delivers. Those are great verbs that you can use. Sometimes if you've already started it, and I see this a lot when I look at resumes, if you said something like responsible for developing XYZ, then take the responsible for out and just start with developed. Okay? So easy. Don't make it too hard on yourself. And let a thesaurus or the synonym search be your guide here. Okay? When you get through all of your professional experience and you've created bullet points and you've created metrics wherever you can, know that you only have to include, say, the last 10 years or so. So if you have some way back experience that you want to include because it's highly relevant to the role that you're seeking, include that in an additional professional experience section. Uh, because that will give you the opportunity to mention the job title, to mention the company, but you do not have to include dates in that section. I especially like you to include an additional professional experience area when you want to include an accomplishment from one of those way back roles in your essential skills section. That gives you the opportunity when someone asks you about that accomplishment, you can say, oh, that's when I was working for whoever, right? And it's in there in your resume. It's just in there under additional professional experiences. And then if you have education that you want to include 
or you have courses that you've taken or other types of professional development, then include that as education and professional development. You can include the university you attended. You can include the courses that you took with or without a degree. If you attended, then it's okay to include that. You're not going to fib and say that you have a degree when you don't. But the value add of attending school and what you learned there, that's value that you can include. And please do include those certifications and courses, anything you believe is relevant to the role. So wow, I have just walked you through the top to bottom of a resume and the components that I recommend you include that help you translate your value of your career to the roles that you're seeking. When you do this, you are going to have a document that gives them something to read instead of skim. I know there's that stat out there that a recruiter only spends six to seven seconds looking at a resume. I don't even know if that's true. I know that if you have compelling information in there, they may start out skimming, but they're gonna go back and take a deeper dive. That's what we're looking for here. You also will have a narrative that shows the hiring manager what it looks like to have you in the role. Because who you are and the results you've created are partly from the opportunities that you've been given, but so much more is really about who you are and how you show up. And lastly, this kind of a resume creates a picture of future success, your potential to create more results and more accomplishments for them, not just your historical success. We want a hiring manager really getting a sense from that first impression, your resume, that you are someone who can make their life easier and better. So pay attention to this important document. Make sure that it is showcasing all that you are and everything that you can do in your future role. And by everything, I mean the most relevant things. All right, now, if you need help with your resume, I am going to put in the show notes a link to my free resume course. It's a mini course. You can do it in a very short amount of time, and I'm including templates that follow along the exact format that I just described for you. All right, so please be sure to take a look at that. And if you do, if you're like a number of people who take a look at that course and you decide that you want me to write your resume for you, then there's an option to check into that as well. All right, you guys know I'm in your corner, so please create a resume that opens doors. I'll talk to you next time. If you like listening to this podcast and you are going to love my program, Job Search Field Guide, this is a unique opportunity. I offer group coaching alongside a five-step process to help you land a job quickly. So I hope you will join me in Job Search Field Guide. This is going to be revolutionary to your career journey and your job search, and you get lifetime access. So find it at elisashuck-careercoach.com, and I will see you there.